That's right. We're back with more Bonehead Detectives on Discovery Kids. Cool. Okay, let's get back to the lab and sneak a peek into the microscope. The mystery of dinosaur cloning keeps growing all the time. But is it really possible? In Dave Grimaldi's lab, they like to think anything is possible. But before you can grow a T-Rex, you need to get some T-Rex DNA. Here's the first step. Dave uses a high-speed saw to buzz off the end. He's got to cut it just right. If he saws into the insect, he'll ruin it. But if he doesn't get close enough, he can't get it out. He's hoping there are some surviving strands of DNA in the bug. And that it's still in good condition. It's science fiction now, but someday it might be possible to get the blood out of the hungry bug that bit a T-Rex. And then... Jurassic Park, here we come. Don't pack your bags, Sam. We're not there yet. Scientists at the Museum of Natural History have been trying to get this right for over 10 years. Then a couple of years ago, they finally did it. They cloned a dinosaur? Wait, I never heard about that. Well, nothing quite that spectacular. What they got was the DNA from an ancient termite, like this one. It wasn't the complete DNA code for the termite, but it was a start. But what about the big guys? Has anyone found any dinosaur DNA? I'm glad you asked. Let's go out to Montana and check in with Mary Schweitzer. She's found something that just might be the real thing. Mary's examining a bone from a T-Rex that may hold the secret to dinosaur life. She was looking at that bone one day when she noticed something incredible. The blood vessels in the bone might have been preserved. And get this, she also saw what she thought might be red blood cells. Now, if T-Rex blood had lasted that long, it meant T-Rex DNA might have too. And from tiny DNA, mighty T-Rex just might grow. So she sent a sample to Raul Kano's lab. Raul and his team were already in the history books for extracting 120 million year old weevil DNA. So he was the right man for the job. And when they worked on the T-Rex bone, they thought they'd done it again. That's right. They thought they'd found actual T-Rex DNA. The next step is cloning a real dinosaur, just like in Jurassic Park. Well, Sam, Detective Mary isn't ready to become a cloning cheerleader yet. I could never say I've isolated T-Rex DNA. That's not something we could ever prove. The only way that anyone could make the claim that they've isolated dinosaur DNA is to grow a dinosaur. And that is not possible with ancient DNA. Don't give up, guys. There's still hope. The next bonehead detective is following another DNA trail. Yeah, Scott Woodward and a bunch of other boneheads found some tiny ancient bone fragments in a Utah coal mine. They couldn't say for sure who the bone belonged to, but they did notice something amazing, a dark spot. What was it? Blood? Could it actually be real DNA? When we first saw that dark spot on the gel, it was both very exciting and also kind of scary because uh, this isn't supposed to happen. You know, this is 80 million years old. There's not supposed to be any DNA. Was it DNA or not? To check his findings, Scott ran a test comparing the mystery DNA to an elephant's. The results were very intriguing. These four rows represent dinosaur sequence, and these four rows represent an Asian elephant sequence across the same portion of the gene. If you look real close, you'll notice that they're not very similar, that they're, the patterns are not similar in these two areas, which mean that the dinosaur and the Asian elephant were not very closely related. In fact, the DNA Scott found wasn't like any modern animal. Was that because it was from an extinct animal? Like a dinosaur? There's no way to say for sure, Sam. But if it was, then in theory, they could think about bringing it back to life. Next, our amber hunters take us to a totally exotic place. And if we're ever going to clone a real dinosaur, this is where the DNA is going to come from. You don't want to miss it. We're still looking for that perfect piece of dinosaur DNA. And Detective Dave Grimaldi has a plan, or at least a new and exciting place to look. Let's head to the great outdoors with Detective Dave. He found the weirdest dig site yet. But this time, we're not going back to the jungle. Nope, just to the suburbs. Welcome to New Jersey. Hey, guys. Hey, Dave. How are you doing, Dave? Dave? Nice hot morning. When construction workers were getting ready to build houses here, they uncovered a ton of amber. And it dates all the way back to the dinosaurs. My immediate reaction was, I think I was a bit stunned. 
uh, when he showed me that amber, perhaps a bit, um, I was in somewhat disbelief. Um, and it really wasn't until he brought me out to this site that I, that I actually believed that there was this abundance in a particular area. In short, they hit the mother of all mother loads. And now Dave and his team are racing the clock to get as much amber out of here as possible. This is a really wonderful piece that has just come out. It's a flow, part of a flow or stalactite of, of amber, and it, it actually has a crack in it. But these particular pieces are very likely to have insects in it, and it has some transparency to it. The amber that they're finding here is almost 100 million years old. That means it was oozing from Cretaceous trees at the same time real dinosaurs were around. Nice gemstone. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's real nice. This site is, is going to be one of the best Cretaceous deposits in the world. It might not have dinosaurs in it, but it has a remarkable array of fossil flowers preserved in the clays. Um, that plus the hundreds of varieties and species of insects and other organisms preserved in the ambers give us a unique insight into the ecology of a Cretaceous community. So this is like a super mall of ancient paleo secrets. Who knows what they might uncover at the New Jersey amber mine? Maybe a few of this little ant's friends. He's the granddaddy of all ants, the oldest one in the world. He looks pretty good for his age. Who knows? Maybe David will find a Jurassic mosquito with a perfect bit of DNA inside. Sounds like a long shot. I'm starting to get kind of disappointed. I mean, I really wanted to play with a baby raptor, but I guess it's not going to happen. Hold on, Sam. Bob Bogger's trying to get our attention. Good timing. He usually cheers me up. What is it, Dr. Bob? Hmm, that's really sad. You're never going to be able to clone a dinosaur from fossil DNA from a mosquito inside amber. You just can't do it. DNA is a long, complicated molecule. It rots real quick. We'll never do it, but I'll tell you, there is an animal we're going to clone. You'll see it soon, an extinct monster, just as neat as a dinosaur. And I'm not talking about Cretaceous. I'm talking about Ice Age woolly mammoths. See, the woolly mammoth is extinct. It's a close living relative, the Indian elephant. And they're entire frozen woolly mammoths that'll give you complete sets of DNA. So you can get a little tiny egg from a female circus elephant and get the DNA from your fossil mammoth. And then pretty soon you have a herd of these great big furry curlicue tusk monsters. And that will be very neat. Work like this is going on right now. People are trying to extract DNA from these frozen mammoths. They'll do it. It's only a matter of years, not decades, years. It will happen. Bob, dude, you just made my day. Would that not be the coolest pet in the whole wide world? I mean, a baby woolly mammoth. Nice. Well, if it seems like that's the end of the dino cloning story, it's not. Experts like Dave Grimaldi are just starting to understand how much Amber can teach us about dinosaurs. And as for Dennis Richmond's big question of the day, can you really clone a dinosaur? Technically speaking, no. Ah, but big whoop, right? I mean, when they clone my boy Wooly, I'm gonna have the most beast and beast on the entire block. I nominate Dr. Bob for today's bonehead award. No, not so fast there, Sammy. Remember when Roy Larimer went down in that Dominican cave? Well, he came up with more than just a chunk of amber. Roy, congratulations on winning the Bonehead Award for Outstanding Achievement in the Field of Climbing Down a Hole. Nice going, Roy. Better luck next time, Dr. Bob. And thanks, Dennis Richmond, for that great question of the day. And remember, even if we can't clone real dinosaurs, they're still alive and well on this show. See ya. Later. Good thing you're not getting that raptor as a pet. Why? It would have been awesome. You know, Sam, those guys aren't exactly cuddly. Oh, come on, Allie. If I can make friends with my dog, Curly, I can keep some itty-bitty raptor under control. You're nuts. They're cute when they're pups, but they always go back to their wild ways when they grow up. No way. Raptors just need to be treated like family. Well, just don't expect me to come to Thanksgiving at your house. You wimp. Doofus.